Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the new Duskmorn meta game. Today we're taking a look at a green-white aura deck. I've already covered the red-white variant. The advantage of the green version is that we have a bit more built-in protection on our creatures with a Toadstool Admirer at 1 mana and Honor Guard at 2 mana, both having a ward 2. So now in the early turns our opponent won't be able to pay the ward even if they do have instant speed spot removal, so they won't be able to punish our aura strategy quite as bad. And then especially if we can back these up with additional protection, from a card like Sheltered by Ghosts, which is of course one of the main draws towards the archetype, giving us an awesome removal spell that also gives a lifelink to our creature and an additional ward 2. Now we can have a ward 4 on our creature basically, so that's still going to be very hard for the opponent to interact with. And then we've got additional protection spells with the Royal Treatment, which will also leave behind a Royal Roll Token for plus one plus one and ward 1, and then Hexproof until end of turn, same as the Shard Mage's Rescue, which will also give a permanent plus one plus one bonus and then another draw towards the deck is Optimistic Scavenger, giving us plus one counters whenever an enchantment enters. And then a Calyx, one of the payoffs for playing green as well, with Constellation similar to the Scavenger, giving us plus one counters. And then it's pretty easy to set up Calyx in this deck where we can attack with one of our creatures and then immediately hit the opponent to start copying our enchantments. And especially in the case of Sheltered by Ghosts, that's going to be backbreaking as we get to copy our Sheltered by Ghosts and completely decimate the opponent's board while building up more and more protection and then we can give our creatures evasion in this deck through our many auras such as audacity giving two extra power and trample if audacity is put into our graveyard we also get to draw a card and then a feather of flight giving one extra power and flying also draws a card when it enters and then ethereal armor another payoff for the aura deck giving plus one plus one for each enchantment we control as well as first strike and then rounding out a deck, two copies of Innkeeper's Talent, which can also steadily grow our creatures over time, and can also give us even more protection if we level it up. And then a mana base also gets the benefit from Hushwood Verge. That's one of the advantages in the green-white version as opposed to the red-white version, which did not get a new dual land. And then we still have Brushland and a Razor Verge Thicket, both fine in a more aggressive deck. And then a couple basics to round it out can also help enable the Hushwood Verge. So only 20 lands total since the curve is relatively low. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We have Toadstool with lots of auras. So this is potentially pretty decent. We'll have Ward 4 total, and with double Ethereal Armor we can likely close out the game before our opponent gets to, let's say, 5 or 6 mana, where they could actually target my creature in the first place. So here we can just double Ethereal Armor. And even if they have one mana interaction, they wouldn't be able to successfully cast it. And Calyx copying our enchantments is also going to be pretty strong. Prankster points towards the Oculus deck. So I don't need to be worried about a temporary lockdown. So yeah, we'll just go for Calyx. Hit you for eight, get another Ethereal Armor. And at this point I could even diversify, put it on Calyx. Don't think it's going to matter too much since we have Sheltered by Ghosts to clear path. So our opponent should be dead regardless. So now they could have potentially still cast a 1 mana bound spell and paid the ward. And then I'll target Calyx now that we drew the rescue, just to see if they did actually have an Into the Flood Maw. Otherwise I would have targeted the Toadstool. And that should certainly do it. But uh, yeah, even if you come prepared to interact with the red decks with lots of 1 mana removal spells, this aura deck can potentially still get you, thanks to all the ward. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. That's a lot of creatures with ward, but only one land. So this hand's a little clunky. And yeah, I usually don't want to draw this many creatures with ward, since they're not all that impactful by themselves. This is a bit more balanced. So scavenger into honor guard. And then 
Maybe I keep Rescue for additional protection. Although we already have a Shelter by Ghost giving an additional ward too. So maybe I prefer Innkeeper's Talents as something that's going to be a bit better over time. Opponent does start with a Red Ley Line, so yeah, could be dead next turn. <laughs> I'll play my Scavenger. And then Shelter by Ghost could also go after the Ley Line next turn. With Hardfire Hero, they need the uh, Cell Sword to have a turn 2 kill, which is a bit different from Scamp, where two pump spells can get there. Opponent just running out the Challenger. So I'll take it, and then, yeah, I think the place to remove Ley Line now before it does any damage. And this is potentially a game we can win. Now they could have a shock to remove Scavenger and get their ley line back. Some versions are running it. It's just gonna be a scamp. Take three. And then if they have a pump spell to grow the scamp, they can also potentially ambush the scavenger. Calyx is an interesting draw, so that will give us two additional plus one counters. Still not enough to beat scamp if they have either Monstrous Rage or Turn Inside Out. Could still be the play regardless, since it is pretty mana efficient. Or we can go Talent level up, and then next turn try Calyx when they may not be expecting it. Because if we do get to copy my Sheltered by Ghosts, it's probably game over. So we've got a 5-4, don't need to worry about burn spells taking out the scavenger. Now we're mostly worried about the cell sword combo kill. Felonious Rage for starters. Finds another Felonious Rage, and we'll see if the scamp attacks. So let's say they just go with Felonious Rage, can target either a scamp or Heartfire Hero. Then they could hit us for 11 damage. And then if they go land plus cell sword in their second main, we could die. But uh, yeah, I don't think I want to play around that since we need the scavenger to stick around. So I'll take it. Opponent just casting Felonious Rage on Heartfire Hero. That's fine. And passes the turn. All right, perfect. So now we can play Calyx and copy Sheltered by Ghosts, which is going to be a huge swing. Grow Scavenger. Hit you for eight. Get a Sheltered by Ghost back. Attach it to Calyx. And what do we want to get rid of at this point? Maybe the Heartfire Hero. And grow Calyx with Eerie and Constellation triggers. Back up to 14, so yeah, we're looking good. Blocking could still be reasonable just to avoid dying to Pump Spells plus Cell Sword. Since they could have had Cell Sword in hand last turn, but just didn't have the land to cast it. Blocking Scam feels bad if they just have a single plus 3 power. So maybe I block Challenger. They'll get to return Hardfire Hero, but we still have an enormous Scavenger. Which is probably good enough. So yeah, what would need to happen for me to lose? Bunt's got two, three extra power pump spells on Scamp. And then I guess it could also just sacrifice a scamp itself. Alright, maybe blocking scamp is still safer. But I'm sure we'll see some pump spell on it. So Monstrous Rage will trade. They can deal four more damage on the way out. But this is still a race we're winning. Can level up talents. Hit you for 10. Opponents go to chump. And now without any scamps or hardfire heroes, we shouldn't be able to die to the combo. Slick shot's fine. And 
and an ethereal armor for good measure. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keeper. Turn one, Toadstool. Turn two, can go Scavenger plus Audacity. We've got removal for the red decks especially. So something like an Ethereal Armor could still improve our hands as a way to quickly close out the game. Opponent also on an enchantment deck, the red-white variety. Doesn't have as much protection as a green-white version, but it can be a little bit faster out of the gate. So if I go Scavenger Audacity and our opponent shelters, then we can still at least shelter back, removing the sheltered by ghost enchantment as opposed to their creature. If I shelter on my creature, they don't have Scavenger. Yeah, that could also be valid. We just miss out on a few plus one counters. But I also don't mind this approach where we get a little bit more damage in first. And then next turn we can still shelter by ghosts. Maybe after our opponent commits their own enchantment. But yeah, important to note that you can still target opposing auras with your sheltered by ghosts if you cannot pay the ward for the creature itself. Opponent's got another scavenger. And maybe an ethereal armor here. They don't, so our opponent's probably passing with a one mana hexproof enchantment, which means I may have to feather a flight. Yeah, if I attack and they block, they can essentially give plus three plus three. So then feather is going to be too late. So I may need to feather first. Royal treatment is going to be useful once we get some more lands in play. So for now, hit for six. And our opponent is going to use the Shard Mage's Rescue, so possible they have more in hand. So yeah, we do want them to tap out before we try and shelter it by ghosts. Opponent's got their own Feather of Flight. Now what I could do is shelter by ghost the Feather of Flight itself. And then even if they have another Shard Mage's Rescue, it wouldn't matter. Alright, opponent's just going for Ethereal Armor, so they're hoping we don't have interaction. And now they're going to be pretty disappointed when we do. And then keep up a Royal Treatment. But yeah, this is just going to be game over. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, this hand is all in on a Toadstool. Don't have much interaction, so it could still be too slow against our red decks. But first strike helps play defense as well. And how about a double ley line of resonance? I guess that's how you get to mythic. So our opponents might have kept a hand with a red cantrip to draw a card, but they cannot target the admirer because it has wards too. That would be pretty funny. So for now. Play Innkeeper's Talents, and then next turn can play another one plus Ethereal Armor. Do still have to watch out for hasty creatures with the uh, Felonious Rage. Alright, opponent's plotting a Slick Shot, so that could kill me next turn with double Ley Line. So all we can do is try and apply as much pressure as possible. So our opponent's at 11, and next turn we could present 11 damage, but we'll see if we're dead. Slick shot attacks. Turn inside out is gonna be plus 8 power. So another one of those is lethal. Or they can second main cell sword, which seems to be the case. All right. That's game. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. Scavenger plus multiple ways to protect it. So that might mean I don't want to play Scavenger turn one. In case your opponent's got a one mana removal spell at the ready. Since it's our only threat. So now we can play Scavenger and then next turn start unloading some auras. Opponent starting with Fable Passage, so likely a slower deck. And then we would love to draw more auras that can increase our damage output along the lines of Ethereal Armor. Opponent Blue-Black and Founding. So are they milling themselves? We'll find out soon enough. For now, say its name, so it is a self-mill deck. And the reanimation variety, trying to bring back Atraxa. Alright, Audacity, not a bad draw. So we can play Audacity. And then if our opponent taps out without trying to remove the Scavenger, I can still cast an End of Turn Feather of Flight to increase our damage output. Opponent's gonna mill themselves. And there we see the Squirming Emergence, which already has, let's see, one, two, I guess it says five permanents in the graveyard. So they're close to potentially bringing back Atraxa next turn with Founding getting back an instant or sorcery. And Fabled Passage is going to add another permanent. So if our opponent keeps it mana, I wouldn't be able to Feather of Flights. I could still play a one mana Aura here just to trigger the Scavenger. All right, Whale of the Forgotten. So that's going to fill their graveyard some more. But now we can Feather of Flight safely. But uh, yeah, looking at their graveyards, eight permanence with Squirming Emergence. So they will be able to bring back Atraxa at the very least. And those were not the draws we were hoping for. So at most I can get in for 10 here, which is not going to be enough. So I might want to get in for 8 just so we present a two-turn clock and keep the rescue available. And now at least we have a bit of built-in protection with Ward, so we need to top deck a Sheltered by Ghosts. Finding a uh, First Strike enchantment here would still be good. And our opponent's going for a Wheel of the Forgotten with all modes. Alright, so the rescue might actually work out here after all. So they have to pay the ward. And then now we can rescue. And then we'll have lethal. So glad they didn't go for squirming emergence. But from their perspective, they were maybe worried about a removal spell. And that should do it. We also see Volgavoth, another powerful reanimation target. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a one mana threat with a bit of protection and then lots of ways to enhance it, so we'll give it a try. Can add another ward 2 on top of the already ward 2 and then hope our opponent presents a threat we can remove. For now, hit you for 2. Our opponent might be a more dedicated control deck as opposed to the Oculus deck. So in that case, I'm going to want to keep answers for an opposing temporary lockdown. So if we can play Admire and Sheltered in the same turn, we can remove it and get our stuff back. But at the same time, I also want to start applying a bit more pressure here. So it's a tricky balance to strike. So I'll just pass. Opponent is going to deduce, so yeah, that's typically not played in the Oculus decks and more of a hardcore control deck. Overlord can draw and discard. Alright, at least now we've got a target for Sheltered by Ghosts. Although exiling the Overlord 
it would be bad if our opponent can then remove the aura because then they would get back the actual creature as opposed to overlord with impending so i think i would rather remove the clue token for now And then attack for four. I don't know if I want to play another Admirer at five mana. They'll likely have Sunfall to wipe the board as well. So that's also reason to keep some leftovers. It's going to be the other Overlord making a pair of two ones. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have Scroll Shift to flicker the Overlords to get those in play. Feather of Flights can draw us a card as well. Might be time for Sheltered, remove an Insect and attack. Or I can see what we draw, Feather of Flight first. Yeah, our opponent's still not really going to be able to take out the Admirer unless they have a 1 mana Bounce spell and then pay 4 Ward. But yeah, let's see what this brings first. A Royal Treatment. So we've got a lot of protection, but our opponent can just jump here for a while. Yeah, I think I uh, pass, since we might see a sweeper now. Beza can uh, give them life, and that's it. So let's do some math. If I go rescue and treatment end of turn, that adds 2, 3, 4 power. This will go up to 10 thanks to Ethereal Armor. And then I can shelter it by Ghosts. That's another 2. So it would be attacking for 12. So then any other enchantment pretty much, other than another Royal Treatment, would present lethal. I think this is my best chance to go for it. Another admire. That one doesn't quite do it, sadly. All right, so sheltered by ghosts, and then can hit them for twelve, which is a little bit short, sadly. And then now we don't have any real protection left. Do I play another toadstool? Opponent didn't really get the chance to cast Sunfall yet, so they might still have that one left over. But I'm also not going to beat them with a 1 1 Toadstool, so let's see what happens. Six mana. And of turn, they do get the Overlord back, so that can always chump our 12 powered one. Split up destroys the tapped Toadstool. The new three mana Sweeper. Five three on defense, land the draw. So yeah, that's not gonna do it here. Well, we had a small window to present lethal, didn't quite get there, but I think it was still the correct play, since we had a lot of potential winning top decks. And the longer the game goes, the less likely we are to survive. So Overlord attacks, draws and discards. And then end of turn they'll get some more Overlords in play. Can't think of a realistic sequence that wins the game here. I do have a lot of life total built up. So it's going to take them a while to actually win the game. Calyx could have been good a while ago. Now it doesn't do much for me. I don't even think I bother playing it. I would rather just activate the Toadstool once again. And a Seized from Slumber. Did not quite work since we had ward. But uh, yeah, it's not gonna matter here. Opponent's playing counter spells as well. Another hard cast overlord. 
even a feather of flight to try and fly over is not going to work. Otherwise, maybe feather of flight into audacity for train pull could have done it. So we'll pass a turn again. And does our opponent have lethal 24 damage? A little bit more with uh, Anchorage. So still a little bit short. Opponent's going to play it extra safe, keeping plenty of blockers back. So I'm sure they've got all the answers they possibly need. Yeah, I'm sad we didn't get to see a scroll shift from our opponent flickering an overlord. Because that seems to be the main appeal of playing all eight overlords. And another land the draw. Alright, now we should be dead. So yeah, judging from our last draw steps, going for lethal that one turn was by far our best bet. And that'll do it. No risk of our opponent decking from all the card draw. Still plenty of cards left. And another split up discard it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got no creatures, so that's an easy mulligan. We've got an admirer, and then a couple enchantments to go with it, so I'll keep. One feather can go, even though I wouldn't mind the extra card draw facing the red aggro deck. So, Sheltered by Ghosts is by far our most important card in this matchup. So happy to have it. Our opponent's deck should not have much removal. At most they can use Burn Together as a removal spell. But uh, yeah, the War 2 is going to make that tricky. But yeah, Triple Swiss Spear. That's a lot of damage if they can enable Prowess next turn. So we could play defense here, put an Ethereal Armor on the Admirer, and then have Rescue available. Which means this would give plus 2, plus 2 and first strike plus another plus one, so we're gonna have a 4-4 four, four first strike left over. May still not be enough, although I guess with first strike it should be alright actually. Versus just play sheltered by ghosts now and attack, which would also be fine to be fair. Yeah, if her opponent had a uh, better creature to deploy, they probably would have played that already. And then now we have ward four essentially so there's no way they can target the admirer and then now we can start gaining life all right never mind opponent did find a slick shot although we can also give the admirer flying for what it's worth so maybe a fun play we can make is ethereal armor the admirer and pass and then see if they attack with a slick shot and we get to ambush it opponent goes all out In this case, I maybe should have waited and tried to block Swiss Spear first. But Slick Shots can end up dealing more damage. And first strike here is key, since they might be able to authorize get past the Admirer. So they will get a 2-2 Detective. Monstrous Rage is not going to help. Opponent learning about first strike. And then Innkeeper's Talents, grow the Admirer some more, may as well level up. And our opponent has seen enough, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, our hand doesn't have any creatures, so go to Mulligan. This is better. And then probably get rid of one land. Can still function on two lands for a while, but ideally 
We'll find a third one for Calyx. And our opponent doesn't have an answer to the scavenger, so we can immediately copy our aura. Opponent blue white Oculus, and yeah, Feather of Flight's not a bad draw. Think I'll main phase that so we can guarantee the card draw. And get in for three. Our opponent could have some bounce spells, which are effective against an aura strategy. And they already have the turn two helping hand. Yeah, that's pretty lucky, since Archive is one of the few ways these decks now have of putting something in Graveyard right away. Since uh, Consider, Rotate it, and Slide of Hand puts it on the bottom. So opponent with pretty much the ideal start. Now we probably have to go for Sheltered by Ghosts, although I could still try Calyx. Because if our opponent does have a one mana bounce spell available as well, we get punished for uh, trying the Sheltered by Ghosts. Whereas with Calyx, we still get to copy the Feather of Flights, and then next turn I can maybe Sheltered by Ghosts and copy it right away. There didn't seem to be an immediate pause, but they could still have an Afar's Dispersal bouncing an attacking creature, so that's still a reason to pump Calyx. Alright, no Afar's Dispersal. I guess what I didn't play around was a potential Elspeth's Smite which could have uh, dealt three damage to a creature. So now we can diversify a little bit, perhaps. So yeah, getting this up to four toughness before attacking also made sense. So now we're hoping they just play some random creature and then Shelter by Ghost, Exile the Oculus, attack, copy Shelter by Ghost again. All right, and there's a sleight of hand we were talking about. So our opponent's tapped out, they will get to Manifest Dread again. And for all we know, that could represent another Oculus that they can flip face up. But now the coast is clear for Sheltered by Ghosts. And then I might want to double Audacity as well. And I guess we'll already have Lethal here. So that works for me. Well, that's a Decalix. And that's already enough. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Promising Hand. Turn 1 Scavenger. Opponent is on the red aggro deck with double Ley Line of Resonance, so it's going to be pretty impressive if we still manage to win this one. Shelter by Ghost, to be fair, is the best card in the matchup for us. So if our opponent only has one creature, we can deal with it. And uh, for now, maybe get the Innkeeper's Talent going. I don't expect much removal from them, so I don't really see the need for the ward. Plus we'll have ward from Shelter by Ghosts anyway. Possible they're on a version with Shock. But more likely that a pump spell is holding priority here. So we get in for three. Now... Our opponent could have Felonious Rage to give creatures haste, of course. So that plus double Ley Line could still kill us out of nowhere. But it's just going to be a challenger. I can always shelter by Ghost a Ley Line, but it will still leave a Ley Line in place. I don't think it's all that helpful. So I'll just get rid of their creature and hope it's the only one they have. Hit you for six. Calyx would be great, since then we can maybe copy the Sheltered by Ghosts. And our opponent explodes. All right, double Ley Line does not do it, so opponent must have kept a pretty sketchy hand. Otherwise, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a keepable hand. Toadstool Admirer. Turn two, we can go Scavenger Audacity on the Admirer. And then for now, get rid of a land. Let's see, do I want double white or double green? I guess I would prefer the extra white. For cards like Ethereal Armor. So the Admirer at least won't be able to get cut down or 
Some two mana removal won't be able to target it. Now we could play the Honor Guard as well, as something that hits a little bit harder. But if they have more discard spells, I would prefer to get on the board and go Scavenger plus, I think, Audacity for starters and keep Ethereal Armor for next turn. Now they can remove the Scavenger before an enchantment enters, so I won't get a plus one counter from it, but still worth a try. Opponent with the Unholy Annex to draw, and we found another Scavenger, so I get to double spell with the Ethereal Armor. Still going on the Admirer, even though next turn they could potentially pay the ward. Wanna get my damage in. So land into another Go for the Throat would do it, but yeah, even if they have a cutdown that would no longer work, and our opponent scoops it up, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We have one creature, it's Calyx. So that's not really how we want to start out, especially on the draw. It's going to be a little slow to get Calyx going. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to mulligan sadly, even though the auras are all quite powerful. This one, at least we can play an admirer early. So I can either get rid of an admirer or a land. But three lands could maybe still help level up the Innkeeper's talent. So I'll give that a try. Opponent is on the red aggro deck, red green. Turn one scamp. Well, we could be dead here. Blocking could be a way to avoid dying, but uh, yeah, can't really afford to lose our only threat either. So our opponents may be doing the math to see if they can present lethal this turn gonna be a swift spear so now especially monstrous rage is painful when they have multiple creatures to put the roll token onto it's gonna be a turn inside out instead so still a lot of extra damage they could sack this camp for another seven and then manifest dread twice so that's gonna leave us in a pretty tough position So, yeah, can play a pair of enchantments or play Innkeeper's Talents, but we're dead to anything whatsoever from our opponents, so don't think it matters. Pass a turn. And block and still die. So, yeah, that's the red deck when it has its powerful draw. And there's not a whole lot we can do about it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is counting on Scavenger to survive. And if it does, we can protect it with double Sheltered by Ghosts, so that could work out. So I'll try it. Opponent on red-white with their own Scavenger, so not their aura deck. Alright, so big decision point here. Do we hope our opponent doesn't have their own sheltered by ghosts? I think we pretty much have to. That's gonna be a challenger, that's fine. So we'll take it. And then we're just on the sheltered plan. Shelter this turn, shelter again next turn. That way our opponent won't be able to target the uh, Scavenger. Now they can still target the enchantment itself to get their creature back. So between the two, which one is scarier? I think Scavenger's honestly still scarier. Attack. And then next turn could shelter again, plus armor. Could also go with talent to level up for the extra ward. And it's going to be Ethereal Armor plus Slick Shot. So yeah, the red-white aura deck, a lot more aggressive. 
but it doesn't necessarily have as much built-in protection and our opponent's already going to scoop it up here since we can just keep growing our scavenger and with lifelink it's going to be impossible for the red deck to outrace onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our sheltered by ghosts. A bit of protection if we need to play it slow. And we'll still play a scavenger most likely. And our opponent with another double leyline opener. We faced a few of those. Sheltered could get rid of one of them, but at this point we probably need to get rid of their creature and hope they don't have more. Hit for three. Lifelink is nice, but uh, yeah, this red deck can deal a lot of damage. So gaining three life may not be enough. All right, opponent doesn't have a follow-up creature, so that's promising. Probably going to go for Feather in the hopes of drawing a land. Green mana would be ideal, so we can play Audacity as well. And our opponent explodes, so that's another double leyline hand that didn't quite work out for them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have lots of creatures, not a lot of auras. So we're not going to be able to make a very large creature, which is sometimes what we need against other aggro decks if it's going to turn into a race. This hand could be good against more controlling decks since we have that built-in protection. So, yeah, it's going to be depending on the matchup here, but I'll try it. And then start with the Admirer. Probably turn to Honor Guard and then hope to draw some cheap auras. Opponent is black green, so more of a mid-range deck. So the ward should be useful. And then we can play Scavenger and Feather of Flight in the same turn to hopefully get a plus one counter out of it. Deep Cavern Band's gonna have a look. Not sure what to take here. Both are reasonable. Goes with the enchantments. And we found Ethereal Armor. So, Scavenger into Armor. And attack all out. Probably gonna keep growing the Honor Guard. So we are shielded from a Liliana minus two. Probably sank the Admire. Something like Glissa would be good since it still trades for the Honor Guard. Opponent passes. All right, so we can grow the Toadstool. Opponent maybe keeping up removal for Scavenger. And then before damage, we can pay. Would still die to cut down regardless. And yep, there it is. Their opponent falls to 8, can go back up to 9. But now they can answer Honor Guard if they have a go for the throat. And yep, there it is. Alright, so... Now we're certainly in trouble. As we draw another land. So yeah, this game's probably not gonna go our way. A mid-range deck with lots of removal is still gonna be a tougher matchup, especially when we don't have a particularly fast draw, since there were a few turns where they couldn't take out the Honor Guard. If we can pump it up enough or get a Calyx going, we can maybe punish them, but uh, yeah, our draw was pretty weak, all things considered. And now Shieldra's gonna take over. They also have a creature land we have to take into account. Feather of Flight to draw. I'm sure our opponent still has removal available here, but we can still try it. Would also lose two more life off Shieldred. Could also wait, and then if our opponent attacks with a bat, I can ambush it with a Feather of Flight. Might be better than just getting my creature removed and not getting to draw any cards. May have to chum block with a Scavenger. 
if they also send in the restless cottage and if they take something out now then they can still attack with a cottage and maybe force me to jump so our opponent did nothing they're maybe just playing it extra safe it's gonna be another deep cavern bat well now we kind of have to go for it and then we could see another go for the throw it in response we don't so counter on the honor guard And then Calyx is going to be taken by the bat. Would have been a decent follow-up here. So I could technically trade for Shieldred. And I guess I would have to. Now our opponent can destroy my enchantments. And then attack with Shieldred. And the bats. I would have to jump with Scavenger so we don't die to the Shieldred trigger. And then it's going to take a pretty spectacular sequence for us to survive. But it is still possible if we draw a removal for Bant, get back Calyx, copy the removal spell. You could see how we can maybe still recover. But uh, Planes is not going to get there. Alright, GG's. Pass a turn. And then just attacking with the Bats and letting Shieldreds do the rest could do it. But I'm sure they're going to fire up Cottage and attack all out now. And Red Knight will draw. And that will certainly do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got the Toadstool plus Sheltered and Royal Treatment, so plenty of protection. And then Sheltered helps in the aggro matchups if it turns into a race. Up against red aggro, luckily no ley line. So yeah, with this hand we certainly have a chance. Opponent just dealing one damage, playing a scamp. I do want to start gaining life as quickly as possible. So yeah, clearing this camp is probably still the safest play we can make. And then next turn we can increase our power even more. And now we've got a total of a ward 4, so there's no way our opponent can target our creature. Now there are still sequences that can kill me here, but they would need lots of pump spells, plus a uh, cell sword to chuck Hardfire Hero at our face. And that's maybe what's happening here. Double turn inside out, yeah. Deal 8, and then Cell Sword would be 8 plus another 8 is 16. And they actually have it, so yeah, not much we could have done here. When they have it, they have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a Keeper. Ideally, we can set up our Admirer to immediately connect with the opponent at the turn we play Calyx. And we're up against the Red Aggro with a Ley Line on turn 0. So this is going to be a tough one. First strike on Ethereal Armor is still pretty useful. So I'm going to have to probably stay back to block. And we can get the Admirer up to 4 power, so hopefully that's enough to set up a successful block. Opponent only has 1 mana, so worst case would be a Dreadmoss Ire. Polonius Rage would just leave them with 2 tokens. But we still get to eat the Heartfire. And we take 6. So is there a point to playing the Shard Mage's Rescue? Makes it so our opponent doesn't have a good double block on the Admirer. Although Calyx putting a plus one counter on it would still be pretty good. Yeah, probably not blocking with Calyx. So I'll take my turn. Another Rescue. Opponent's gonna jump. Well, 
on one lane that limits how much they can do here. It's going to be a shock on Kallax. All right, Bowden playing the version with shock. No real synergy with the ley line. But uh, yeah, we can still keep growing the admirer in a multitude of ways. Innkeeper's talents. And then, as opposed to playing another admirer, we can either level up or keep up Shard Mage's rescue. I think it's time to put the pedal to the metal here. Hit for seven. And then next turn I can maybe play another admirer and try and grow that one instead. Yeah, if we wanted to play around Shock, we could have put a plus one counter on Calyx last turn, and then things would have looked a lot better. As we now fall to two. Feather of Flight, is that going to save me? Still going to be a little bit short, but I could draw into another Ethereal Armor. Would Audacity do it? I believe so, since that's another three extra power. So we do have a couple outs here. And there we go, Ethereal Armor. That will certainly do it. Alright, so we got to see our green-white aura deck in action. And there's a lot of ways to approach the aura archetype in standard right now. Green-white offers a bit more protection, red-white is a little bit more aggressive, has more haste creatures, and then blue-white has more card draws, so is maybe capable of playing a longer game, and even black-white could be reasonable, giving you access to a bit more removal, so that can also help fight the red aggro decks. So between these, green-white needs a pretty specific meta to be the best choice if opponents are packing a lot of spot removal, then the ward can help protect against all the spot removal compared to the other versions which might get punished more by instant speed interaction. So right now may not be the best time for the green-white deck. If we see more decks try and fight mono reds by including lots of instant speed removal, then green-white might be one of the better choices in terms of aura strategies. But of course sometimes you will still have a hand without any real protection and then interaction can still make your plan fall apart. So it's always going to be an inherently risky strategy, but if you can apply pressure quickly, Ward is almost equivalent to Hexproof, so then uh, the deck can still get the job done before the opponent gets a chance to get a foothold in the game. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!